You are listening to the Fun with Horror podcast with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hey. hey. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Well, I am talking to you, Scotty, but I'm also <laughs> I'm also talking to our beautiful and amazing horror family, friends, and buddies. Welcome to Fun with Horror, the weekly horror movie review podcast in which Scotty, who you just heard, and I take turns giving each other movies to watch, and then we dis- we discuss them the following week. We have exactly two rules. One, Whoever picks the next movie has to pick one they've never seen, and the other rule is that we both have to watch it. Last week was my pick, where I chose the newest rendition or version of Firestarter. Which Some is, people call it an adaptation. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. That's what I meant. Adaptation, uh, directed by Keith <laughs> Thomas and starring Zac Efron and Ryan Kira. And Armstrong. Armstrong. Oh, Armstrong, you're right. I forgot that part. Mm-hmm. Ryan Kier Armstrong, thank you. But remember, everyone, stick around to the end of this episode where we get to hear Scotty's pick for next week's movie. But without further ado, what hey buddy, am I going to pick? I don't know, man. What I, am I going to pick? I don't know. I hope, I, I'm, I'm always excited, so I, I don't know, but I'm excited. What am I going to pick? Hmm. I feel like there's a clue in there. What? Well, <laughs> it's not Last House on the Left, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Just a little bit of background, everybody. Before uh, before we recorded, <laughs> we did a test, and in that test I said, Andrew, name any movie except for Firestarter. <laughs> and any movie in the world, and for whatever reason, he said Last House on the Left. <laughs> I don't even know why. I think I got I got nervous, and so I looked, and I'm like, I'm in a house, and then I thought house. I could have done night house. I could have done deep house. But you said but last house on the I left. Said you last didn't even house. say you didn't even say house. I know. You could have just said house. And You're right there. Yep, but man, you went you went full. I went dark, dude. Yeah, you did. I went real dark. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, man? <laughs> yeah, you know I'm okay. I'm oh, I'm good. It's okay. it's a good Tuesday. Good, yes. How are is. you? I'm good, man. It's a good Tuesday. It's yeah, good happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy fun with horror day. Happy fun with horror day. Every Tuesday is your fun with horror day. Yeah, I'll tell you something crazy. Let's hear it. Did you know that as much as I've loved horror mm-hmm. and horror movies my entire life, Mm-hmm. I have never been to a horror convention. Right on, dude. Me either. I've been, I've been to comic cons. I've been to mm-hmm. like f- science fiction, fantasy cons, cool. geek cons, if you will. <laughs> never been to a horror convention. But in two weeks, I'll be going to my very first one. <sighs> I'm going to Monster Palooza. Woo! In Pasadena, California. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. That's going to be amazing. Oh, my gosh. I'm excited for you, man. Take lots of pictures. And I will. I want to hear all about it. Well, I wonder if anybody will recognize me. Well, if they hear you talk, they <laughs> sure will. <laughs> if you just go up and say, hey, and they'll go, huh, fun with horror? I'll be like, oh, you're one of the 20 people. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We get more than 20. That's right. We have at least 21. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> our podcast is able to drink. Wait, you made that joke once, didn't you? I don't know, maybe. I think you did. Back in like our 21st episode, you, I think you said our podcast is Oh, able yeah. To drink I think you're right. <laughs> so I just regurgitated that. I like it. Oh, I've used that joke before. Actually, I used that joke this week. Did you? I did. Congratulations. Thanks, man. I tell me, tell me, what was the context? A uh, person I work with had been at the company for 21 uh, years. And oh. I was like, oh, you're, the time that you've been here is now able to drink. Able to. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Last House on the Left? I have never seen the original. I have seen the remake. Oof. 
Yeah. I've seen the original. I've never seen the remake. Oh. <laughs> well, look at us. <laughs> For next week's movie. Oh, my God. Two weeks in a row. Last house on the left. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. Uh, the worst two weeks in fun with horror history. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oof. Not that our history is that long. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this will take the cake. I remember back when we did Tourist Trap. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Those are the mannequins <laughs> from Tourist Trap. Yes, I, I got it. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, boy. We should talk about Firestarter. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. She's becoming a young woman. I'm not going to jail. And someday soon, you're going to change the world. She may be capable of a nuclear explosion. Run, Charlie! On your knees! Simply with the force of her mind. The whole world going to hell. Promise me that you'll never use your gifts to hurt people. Oh, you're bad people, I promise. Trust me, Charlie. You don't have to be afraid. Please, I can help you. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. Is it, is it is it recording now? I think it's recording. Yes, I pushed the button. Irving? Yes. Irving? Is it recording? Yes, it's recording. I pushed it. Are we doing the fire starting? Yeah, I think I, I, I pushed the button, so it should be fire starting. So we're starting fires? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, everyone listening. That was actually us. Yeah, the <laughs> voice acting. <laughs> That's right. What? <laughs> that was really good. That um, was good. Oh man. Oh man. Let's just do a whole episode like that. <laughs> yeah, people would. People would. We, we won't it. lose listeners at all. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> people are like these two new hosts are. <laughs> I like them better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Scotty and Andrew are horrible. <laughs> oh, Irving and wait, what's my name? I, I don't know. I couldn't think of a good one, so I didn't. Oh, come on, Irving and <laughs> Irving and Winston. Yeah, Winston. Yes, there you go, Winston. You go. Winston. Winston, Irving, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> I guess let's just. Uh, are we gonna talk about? Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Pride. We got stuff to talk about. I think. All right, well, now that we've got that out of our systems, <laughs> yes, everybody out there, we are about to spoil the new Firestarter. Yes. Not the old Firestarter, because no. I don't remember it well enough. Have you? Do you? Have I've you never seen, seen it? it. You've never seen it, right? I've never seen it, yeah. So I don't think we can spoil it too much. <laughs> Drew, um, Drew Barrymore is in it. Yeah, and she says, back off. Back off. Oh, I don't that's remember. all I remember. Or I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's all I remember. She's so cute. <laughs> um. So anyway, we're gonna spoil the new fire starter. Yes. Now I have read the book, oh. and I am still reading the book, nice. which I will talk about. Yes, please. But I'm gonna try not to spoil the book. So if you haven't read the book, do not worry. Mm. If I get to a point where I feel like I need to spoil part of the book, I will warn you guys nice and andrew do you care if i spoil the book for me no no i'm fine with yeah so i'm not gonna i'll warn the listeners though anyway yeah andrew i think it's time that you give us a three minute recap of uh keith thomas's fire (laughs) starter 2022 oh man i'm so nervous all right are you ready i guess you know i'm not (laughs) I'm not, I, mean, I don't even. I, don't I tried even have my timer ready. I tried doing just a, a rough run through earlier, and I was like, Oof. "Oh boy, this is gonna be rough." All right, so bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna count down from thirty. Thirty. <laughs> Twenty nine. Winston, that's too much. <laughs> All right, three, right, two, well. one, bingo. Okay, so the movie starts with Andy and his wife Vicky and their. Rocking the baby to sleep, they put the baby down, Andy leaves, and then all of a sudden a fire starts in the baby's room, and it looks like the baby is the reason for the fire, has caused the fire with her mind. Baby catches fire, and Andy wakes up. We're now in modern, present day. Um, 
Andy is played by Zac Efron, and he has... Oh, excuse me, we go through the credits first. The credits show that uh, Andy and his wife, Vicky, went in, hi- in college to get like this tri- clinical trial drug. Um, they each had some kind of mental sort of abilities, but then this drug really, really enhanced it. Eventually, they had a baby, who is Charlie, who was our main character. And through um, having them having powers and... And Charlie grows up eventually having powers, uh, telekinesis, as well as starting fires. Um, uh, later on in life, uh, Charlie's in school. She's being bullied. She uh, eventually runs to the bathroom and sets this giant fireball and blows up this stall. Anyway, the government is now after this family um, because they have been experimented on and they're sort of superheroes almost. Uh, <laughs> uh, Charlie and Charlie gets mad though one night and accidentally sets her mom on fire. Um, Vicky is like, go take her, go get ice cream, leave for a little bit. This new character named Rainbird comes into play who like works for the government agency and comes and kills Vicky. Um, eventually Charlie and Andy come back home and kind of shoot Rainbird aside and now they're on the run. A little bit later, they meet up with Irv, who's the kind of this older gentleman, uh, and takes them in, and Andy uh, has this power to essentially manipulate people into doing what he wants them to do. Um, he uses it for good, though. Like earlier in the film, he helps someone stop smoking. Anyway, he gets to go, and they get to go to Irv's house. Eventually, Rainbird and some other government officials show up, and Andy uses his manipulation skills on Rainbird and basically makes it look like um, Charlie runs away, and she actually does and gets away, and he tricked him. Anyway, everyone takes, uh, the government takes Andy to the secret facility, and Charlie's on the run. While on the run, she learns kind of to harness her abilities, her powers, and then she keeps hearing Andy uh, basically calling for her from this facility. She goes there. It turns out it wasn't actually Andy. It was Rainbird that was calling her. Uh, Andy is like dying because anytime he uses his powers, it makes him sick. He basically uses his powers one last time to make Charlie blow up the whole facility and set it all on fire, which she does. She basically destroys everyone and everything. She comes into contact with Rainbird. She almost kills him, but doesn't. She eventually blows up the rest of the place, walks outside on the beach, kind of passes out. Rainbird comes out, picks her up, and takes her away in the night as the credits roll. Wow, dude. 52 it. minutes and 57 seconds. <laughs> Two minutes. For, dang, man. <laughs> Ooh, I really tried there. I was like, that one was tough, man. <laughs> you sh- every time I love your three minute recaps because every single time <laughs> my intro. you start, you stress me out so bad <laughs> because you take like 30 to 45 seconds of your three minutes just setting the entire <laughs> like telling about the fi- first minute of the movie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know why I do it, man. I have no. I idea. love it. I love it. Thanks, buddy. I love it. <laughs> well, that's Firestarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just set the set the movie up for like two and a half minutes, and then last half hour, and then she gets captured, and bam, yeah, it's over. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right. So, this is an interesting movie. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting discussion. Agreed. And I'm super curious to hear what you think because Mm -hmm. we are coming from two completely different directions at this movie. You're right. Yeah, for sure. You've you've never seen the original, the the first adaptation, Mm -hmm. and you've never read the book by Stephen King called Firestarter. Mm -hmm. I have read the book. I have seen the original movie, and I'm rereading the book right now. Nice. So I was coming at the movie from that direction. Right. So so this is going to be an interesting <laughs> dichotomy between the two of us. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep. What did you think of this movie, Andrew? Um and like like you said, I mean this is this is my first exposure to Firestar. I've never read it, seen the old one. Yes. Um so this as a movie uh, you know as as a whole, I would say was good. Um. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I, this was it was it was fine for me. I, I I enjoyed it. Um, I'm not like running to see it again, but you know, I watched. Well, it my do you have to run to see it again? No. 
Yeah, I mean, you just turn on the TV again. You stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was it was good. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't my favorite, but it was good. Um, what about you though? Well, see that that's where it gets interesting. Yeah. I have I kind of have two critiques of this movie. Okay. Uh, much like some of the Harry Potter movies. Oh. I felt like this. <sighs> I felt like it was a it was a good movie. Like okay, so like, I thought it was okay. Okay, let's put it that way. I thought it was okay. Mm-hmm. As an adaptation, I thought it was awful. Ooh, okay. Um, this uh-huh. movie to me was a clear uh, a, a clear example of why it works so well. The newer format where uh, a network like HBO or mm-hmm. whatever will, instead of making a movie adaptation of a book, they will do a six-episode miniseries. Right, yes. Or a limited series, as they call them. Yes. I would have loved to have seen this as a limited series. Mm. So when I watched this movie a second time, I tried so hard to push the book out of my head. Mm-hmm. Because I was trying to judge the movie on its own merits. Because the other thing that happened is while I was watching it the first time and I was having these thoughts about it, the movie ends and I watched it with Mary and Mary loved it. She oh, thought wow. it was a really good movie. Nice. Okay. All right. Which affected my thinking of it. I'm like, okay, I started thinking, am I, am I thinking about it wrong? Do I need to push the book out of my head and just think about it as its own movie. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really tried to do when I watched it a second time and took notes. So I'm going to try and critique it and talk about it from that point of view. Mm -hmm. Later on, I might get into some of the differences between the book and the movie without trying to spoil too much. Cool. I love that. I'm I'm game for that, man. I want to know. I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I knew you would be. I mm-hmm. just, I just, I want to be fair to listeners who want to read the book. Right, right, right. I want right. them to be able to listen to this podcast without worrying that I'm going to ruin the book for them. Right. So, and let's put it this way: I'm still reading the book. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm like almost 300 pages into a 400 page book, so oh, okay. I can't spoil the end of the book because I don't really remember it from when I read it as a teenager. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, a lot of these things, I'm going to be asking you what you thought of different things. Okay. Because yeah. I have a certain thought in my mind when it comes to the book, but I want to know how you felt about certain aspects of the movie. Oh, I like that. Not having read the book. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm game, dude. This sounds fun. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I want to mention before we get into the serious discussion. Yes. At the end of the last episode, when you when you picked this movie, mm-hmm. I told you that I was in the I was reading the book and it right. was kind of going slow. Yes, this movie had such an interesting effect on me. Really, that I did not expect. Yeah, when before the movie, before I watched the movie, mm-hmm. like I said, I was under a hundred pages into the book after a week of reading. I was on the I was ready to put the book down and read something else. Right. And when you especially when you pick the movie, I was I was thinking to myself, yeah, I'm I'm going to watch the movie. My whole goal was to read the book before I saw the movie, but I'm fine with watching the movie before I finish the book and I'm just going to read something else. Okay, yeah. So the night before I watched the movie, I started reading a, a different book. Doesn't matter what it was. All right. Okay. Don't ask. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but then after I saw the movie, it had the complete opposite uh, effect on me. I wanted to. I then wanted to keep reading the book. Hmm. And I went full bore. Like I was rabid to get <laughs> into the book because I kept thinking the book. Now the book was so different than this. Like what? Right. The book what happens in the book? I got to remember. So I just wanted to read. So yeah. I love that. Well, yeah, it sounds like if you already if you're not even to page 100 and now you're on 300. Yeah, which I'm not a very fast reader, but 
you know, I don't that's, also don't have a lot of time to read. Right. No, that's pretty quick. <laughs> so. So, yeah. So interesting. With that said, uh, start start telling me wh- your thoughts about this movie. Tell me some things. All right. Um, I can tell you one thing. One thing I really enjoyed right off the bat <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, was I I like the in or excuse me I like the um the credits at the beginning. I kind of thought that was an interesting way to give a backstory. Um, and it reminded me a little bit, kind of reminded me of Malignant, um, for some Kay. strange reason. Um, you know what it reminded me of? What? what? The Incredible Hulk. <gasps> yes, you're right. Because they, instead of like telling the whole history of Bruce Banner and the how he became the Hulk, they just told it real quick in the credits. You're right. And they did the same thing with this. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a that's really good. Um, <laughs> but I liked it because it gave me enough info where I was like, "All right, I get it. That makes sense." Um, plus, hearing I so my question, I guess, to you, I enjoyed uh, the music in this, which of course was by uh, John Carpenter and yeah. uh, Cody Carpenter. Cody Carpenter, thank you, again. and Daniel Davies. Yes. Um, <coughs> basically the same team that did Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. Correct. So having their theme kind of going throughout with, you know, these two, this couple talking about how they've kind of had powers and all that and seeing that guy, like, rip his own eyes out. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that was crazy. But it was it was just kind of a, a sporadic, here's here's a bunch at you right now with this cool music. And I was like, I'm, I'm on board. I think that's cool. Um, so I enjoyed that. I like that yeah, moment. Yeah. My question though, did you did you like either one that moment and what was your thoughts on the score? I thought that the score mm-hmm. elevated the movie. I don't think the movie Right. I think the score lent a tone and a mood to the movie that would not have been there if it had like any other kind of music. I would I agree with that. Absolutely. So I ob- I honestly think that the music made this a better movie. I would agree with you. Yeah, 100%. And so that's the the score is interesting and I do have to talk about the book at this point okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's part of the history in the book. And that's what I did really like about the opening credits is that they were able to show you that. Nice. Um they were able to show you uh the history how how uh what's his face sorry uh, andy yeah andy and and vicky mm-hmm. got their powers nice and and in the book there's a guy that claws out his own eyes oh, so crazy. i really like that they included that that's cool i was i i did i did dig that cool okay um yeah yeah so. i just yeah I, like i said i just thought it was a cool intro I was on board. Or uh, credits, I mean. Yeah. Um, okay, I have a question then. Because one thing that bugged me was, mm-hmm. and maybe the book does this, but whenever Andy uses his powers and cracks his neck, I, I don't know why, but that just kind of bugged me. Like, that's how he... It bugged me too. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was one of the biggest things. Every time he used it, I was like, ugh. Okay. He, he does do the push. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't like, like at first it was okay. It didn't, but then like, especially watching it a second time, I was like, Ugh, why is he, why does he have to crack his neck? Right. Like that? It's like such a tell. You yes. Know? Instead of just pushing. And they also made a big deal in the movie about him having to make eye contact. How did you feel about that? Um, I didn't really like it. <laughs> I thought it would have been a lot more effective if he could just do it. Um, yeah. And maybe, I, again, I don't know the book, so maybe that, I don't, is that from the book? Like, they have to make eye contact? No. Yeah, then no. I don't, I don't like that. Um, <laughs> well, I mean. Well, that's what, yeah, that's why I'm asking from the point of view of somebody who hasn't read the book. Right, right, right. Yeah, I didn't like, like if it. that, if that bothered you at all. It did. I just thought, if he has powers, like, I just felt like that was silly that he yeah. has to make eye contact. Um, I also, I hated him bleeding from the eyes. Oh, me too, dude. It was a visual way of showing that he was having little brain hemorrhages every time he used his power, which, you know, that's good because it puts him on a timer. Right, right, right. 
and lend some tension to them. But uh, uh, I believe in the original movie, it was just in the book. I don't even think he bleeds. He just gets these really bad, like debilitating headaches. Mm. Uh, it's hard to show that in movie form. Yeah. So I think in the original movie, uh, Andy had nosebleeds. Okay. And that that was showing that he was bleeding inside his head. I feel like I mean if he, if he just has a headache, he could even just put his hand to his head and just go. Mm. I mean, yeah, I, but feel I mean like these were debilitating headaches. Like, oh, and they okay. could they okay. could easily show that. Yeah. Where like he's driving and he can't really even drive well. He's got to right. get off the road. He's got to get to a hotel because he's not going to be able to function. Right. It's messed him up so bad. Yeah. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan. Of how they visualized his push. Yep, I I totally agree, hundred percent, and that's coming from without reading the book. So, yep. Yeah. I didn't really like that. On the other hand, since we talked about that, mm-hmm. how did you like the visualization of Charlie's powers? Um, just the way they looked. Yeah, how she how she looked when she was making fire. Um, I thought it was fine. I guess I didn't really. I'm trying to remember even how she did it. I guess she just kind of screamed, and then there's that ball that sort of forms. Yeah, sort of. Um, at one point, and then sometimes she just yeah, kind of screamed sh- and set things on fire. You know, right? Um, I thought it was interesting. I I liked it when actually we could see it like forming. I wasn't as much of a fan as it when it just something is just burning all of a sudden, like when she's. And maybe that's just me being a superhero fan or whatever. I like seeing like the process, but um, yeah, I I was less into it when you just like like when she's walking on the beach and like there's fire just going on next to her that just pops up. I was like, yeah, that's not as cool. <laughs> See, I did like that. Oh, I, okay. I disagree with that. Okay. Because I liked it more. Like I loved the visualization of the heat rising in the room she yes. was in. Yeah, that was cool. With the you know the heat waves in the air, mm-hmm. uh, and I liked. It just it it does seem kind of weird to me when some kind of fire just forms in front of her and f- shoots off. Mm-hmm. Unless there's something forming that fire, it, I get no. I but get I where did. You're from, yeah. But that said, I did like the way they visualized it. Like I always, I always like, and I think they kind of got this from the original movie. Her hair flying back. Yeah. Like there's a heat, a wind of heat, mm-hmm. like pushing back against her. And and I'm going to say Ryan Kiera Armstrong mm-hmm. was fantastic. Yeah. I thought yeah. she was amazing. Yeah. She's a good little actress that I'm sure, I'm sure we will see more of her. I also liked Zach Effrontery. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? I've been I've been saying it wrong. That's how your phone pronounces it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everybody's uh Andrew texted me during the week and he he typed Zach Efron and his <laughs> iPhone corrected it to Zach Effrontery. <laughs> so I actually wrote that down in my notes. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. Zach Effrontery. <laughs> uh, but he was good. He's I like we said last week. We're both we both like Zac Efron. So yeah, um, yeah. I'm never I'm never disappointed with his acting. Yeah, not disappointed with his acting, but I'm not a big fan of CG blood coming out of his eyes. <laughs> right. Yeah, agreed. Like obvious CG blood. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They it was just yeah. Their budget mm. wasn't great on the on the eye. Didn't need it. Didn't need it. <laughs> agreed. Um. What about the okay? What about the opening? <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> the opening was a little fun. Yep. Yeah, kind of crazy. I fig- I knew that was coming though. When you see the crib, like you see things going on fire, and then right when he lifts her up, I was like, oh, she's gonna catch fire real quick. Sure enough. I will tell you, as somebody who, uh, for somebody who's read the book, mm-hmm. the beginning that intro throws you off right away. Oh, okay. Because the baby is just happy, and it's just like he set the set stuff on fire, which in the book, uh, Charlie, mm-hmm. she sets things on fire when she's angry. Oh. So, 
I was really happy when it turned out to be a bad dream. Yeah. Like one of Andy's bad dreams because I was like, that. I hope that they're not just saying that she just sets fires whenever she wants because she's happy. Right. You know? Yeah, because that was part of the... That is part of the horror in the book. Like, imagining as a parent that your kid, your baby, when mm-hmm. it gets angry and upset, it sets things on fire. Right. And there's even a, a point where they talk about when Charlie, as a as a really young baby, mm-hmm. like, set her own hair on fire. You right. Know? So that was... I felt like that opening was a little nod to that as well. Yeah. But... I- my question, though, because I think last week you mentioned that the book starts with a bang. So I was thinking it was that. Yeah. I was thinking it was... No, that's know. not the bang. Okay. Interesting. No, the book... This was part of my problem with the movie. Uh-huh. They spent too much time uh, setting up everything. The book starts with Andy and Charlie on the run. Oh. They're running from the government people. Right. In the book, they're called The Shop. Um, cool. Okay. I forget what they were called in this movie. It's I three letters, remember. and I can't remember GSI or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, they they're already on the run. All of the stuff that happens at their home, and Andy and Vicky in the in the the college um, mm-hmm. trials or whatever. Yeah, that's told through flashbacks in the book. Okay. But Andy, yeah, Andy and Charlie are on the run from the government people already. Okay. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think that would have um, been effective as in the movie too. Oh, I I think it would have been effective in a TV show. Yo, in a limited yeah. series. Yeah. Like, give for me sure. give me even just four episodes would be fine. Mm-hmm. But you know, that would be like a four hour movie. Uh hour and a half was just too short. Yeah, and I don't know if short. you felt that. Like to me, even ignoring the book, the first time I watched the movie, mm-hmm. it felt rushed. Agreed. No, that was the first thing I said <clears throat> after I watched. I was like, that was really quick. Yeah, really quick. Um, yeah, I thought the same thing. Um. So. Yeah, I and I was ah oh, man. <laughs> It's like they did things that I I thought were okay but just didn't really do well like like Andy's job. Yeah. He runs a job called Confidence Associates where he teaches people how to quit doing things and he's he's helping a lady quit smoking and this is the first time we get to see his push. Right. Uh and what effect it's having on him. But yeah, I don't know. Did that happen in the book? He does he does run a self help okay. type place. Okay. But he does it subtly, you know? Mm-hmm. That wasn't so subtle. No. I wasn't sure how to feel about that scene. How did you feel about it? I thought it was weird. I felt like if that had happened to me, like if I had had an addiction, like mm-hmm. smoking, and someone was able to talk to me for thirty seconds and have me stop. I mean really not even want to even go near it, I would go tell everybody. Like, I would immediately go and be like, you guys got to know this guy. Yeah, he would have a successful operation going. Yep, exactly. Um, Yeah, so it was a little weird to me. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Charlie goes to school where she is bullied. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, That's my Tell me about that. Tell me about that. Um, those scenes were ridiculous to me. <laughs> uh, the teacher letting the mean kid just, like, call her weird and just, that's fine. I was like, no, that's... I didn't even really notice it until the second time I watched the movie. Really? And then it pissed me off. Yeah, I was like, no teacher in their right, well, good teacher, would do that and just be like, hey, that's fine. You can call this little girl weird and make fun of her for essentially not having much money. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, and all what? she does is like, Charlie, are you okay? Yeah. And like this bully, this kid, they're playing dodgeball, yeah. and Charlie, like, and it, I, the beginning of the scene was so sweet because the way Charlie's acting mm-hmm. just made me so, I felt immediately protective over her. Right, she just, she's a kid. Like, you just see her as this little kid. And she's having fun. Right, exactly. And 
it's like this innocent fun like oh my god am i doing it am i am i getting along with other kids look mm-hmm. i'm throwing a ball yep and then she turns around and her teacher's like good job charlie and then the kid comes up slams a dodgeball into the back of charlie's head yep first time i watched it i was like oh damn charlie's about to get mad yeah and so i wasn't really paying attention to the teacher <laughs> who ignored the bully kid yes and yep. was just like charlie are you okay yeah and then like did not even reprimand the kid at all yep i was so frustrated with this i was like that's the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen yeah so dumb Ugh. i've I, i've been at the a same parent, time so i know <laughs> yeah. i know what i would do <laughs> at the same time i like the bathroom scene yeah yep. i like that the teacher did not die i did too yep I thought that um was good. i like too that all the water was steaming like crazy i thought that was fun cool way to uh yeah show the heat well yeah I, w- I mean what it was trying to show also was mm-hmm. that this is something that they didn't say too much in the in the movie and this is maybe something like dialogue that may have been left out, but mm-hmm. Charlie's parents had tried to teach her that when she feels it coming to direct it at water. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. I, she says one line in there, I think, that says, I try to throw it at the water or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. So that's what she was trying to do. Okay. That's right. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, not long after that, we're introduced to John Rainbird. Yeah, John Rainbird. Now, what do you think of John Rainbird? Um, I, I thought he was interesting. Um, I didn't like him. Like, I mean, he <laughs> kills Vicky right away. And so, yeah. of course, you're like, well, this guy sucks. Um, yeah, so I didn't I like did, him, but I, I didn't yeah. mind him. I didn't mind him as a character. First of all, I'm glad that they actually cast an American Indian. Yes. Yep. Instead of George C. Scott. Was that who it was? <laughs> yeah. I looked up the cast. Oh I was like, wait, gosh. who did George C. Scott play in the movie? And he was he was Rainbird. And I'm like, really? Oh, Hollywood. Yeah. So I'm assuming he was in the book too, an American Indian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 This he's a good. big dude. He's he's a little smaller in this movie than he is in the book. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into the other differences, but because he is a different character in the book, like his, his, I haven't reached the end of the book, so I don't know how his arc goes in the book, but yeah, in the book, he's a little, I don't know. He's a little, he's not as, I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to say too much. He's different. He's just different. He's still the same character, but his his personality is a, a little different in the book. Okay. Right. So I especially concentrated on deciding whether I liked the way Rainbird was written in this movie. Okay, cool. And I found I didn't mind it. Okay, good. I think I think they mainly did it so that Charlie wasn't alone at the end. Right, right. So that she had some hope for somebody to guide her. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, I did, and I like the actor. He had a, he had a, he had some nice presence to him. I agree. Yep. I liked him too. I thought he, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we have the scene where Charlie burns her mom's arms, which was, wow, that was gnarly. Yeah. That, the special effects on that were great. Her arms afterward looked like that hurt. Oh, and the way that they both acted in the aftermath, because yes. they know that it's not really Charlie's fault, right? That she right. can't control it. Yeah. Although the line that she said like broke my heart. <sighs> Oof. Yeah. It was supposed to be you. Yes, I was like, oh, that's got to tear at you. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I did not. I mean, I appreciated the line just for what it made you feel, but I, it, like I said, it broke my heart. I was like, I don't yeah. like that. <laughs> Which, when you watch it a second time, you see it. She's she's mad at her dad. Right. But her mom is standing closer, and Charlie doesn't have enough control over her power to to direct it past her mom to her dad. So yep. 
she accidentally sets her mom's arms on fire. <sighs> Which I have, okay, I have a question for you then. Yeah. Um, in the movie, and I don't know if it happens in the book, but we have Andy who's like, she needs to lock this thing up. I don't want her, you know, using this power. Where Vicky's like, we need a trainer. Let's have her use this power. Towards the beginning. Mm-hmm. What, I mean, and again, maybe it's, you might have a preference because of the book, but like, whose side were you on at that point? Because you uh, know it's, that it's it, it's a good it's a good conversation because you can understand both sides exactly exactly, and that's that's why it's such a difficult conversation too yeah because Charlie does need to be taught to keep her powers under control but mm-hmm. at the same time her powers are bad like she could hurt people right so but that led to things that I didn't like in this movie so oh, okay. we'll talk about that in a second okay. So yeah, Rainbird comes in, kills her mom, kills uh, Vicky, and then there's the cool scene where he's holding a knife to Charlie's throat, mm-hmm. and she gets away by blasting with her firepower Right. when she sees her mom. But then, uh, let's see, yeah, that leads to... Okay, so then we're introduced to a couple more characters. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Cap, uh, Cap, the captain. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I didn't even bring up IMDb. And Dr. Wanless. Yeah, Dr. Wanless. Which, um, <laughs> you're going to have to help me with this scene, dude. I like the scene. I did too, but I didn't get it. Like, I'm like, is he at an insane asylum? Why does he have this, like, why is she bringing him, um, pixie sticks, essentially? We got zero background on him, so I'm like, and he was like, well, this, he was the guy that made the, them. Yeah, okay, you Which got I, that much. I got that, but I'm like, why is he at an insane <clears throat> asylum, and why is she bringing him pixie sticks? I just thought that was weird. Yeah, I don't, I, I never got the pixie sticks. He seemed like he wasn't all there, obviously. Right, He's right, right, making little mountains of sand with his pixie sticks. Right, and it was Kurtwood Smith, yeah. who we've seen before. He's great. Oh yeah. It's, you know, it's a conversation that does happen in the book, but in a totally different manner. Okay. Um, and, yeah, the point of, it was, the point of the conversation was to talk about how dangerous Charlie could become. Right. Right. When she learns to use her powers and she gets older and more powerful. Right. That was the simple point of that entire conversation. Yep. Yep. And for Wanless to say, you need to kill both of them. Yeah. Like you need to kill the little girl. Yeah, because she could she could destroy us with nuclear power. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I um, agree. I liked the conversation. I thought it was very interesting and yeah. scary. Um, but yeah, just it the intro of it threw me off. And it's 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 kind of a mental hospital, but it's a it's a veterans hospital. Okay. There there's a sign. It says the Herman Pinchot or Pinchot Veteran Hospital. Oh man. And Herman Pinchot is actually a character in the book, so that was like oh. their nod to that. Okay, I didn't even. It's like that. we don't, we're not going to cast all these different characters from the book, but we're we're going to give a nod to one of them here. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was, whatever. Yeah, it was a cool conversation. I like the conversation. Yep. I like the idea of, you know, saying that Charlie could become way more powerful than, she's a scary. Her powers can be scary. Yeah, for sure. But then we have the motel scene. Oh, oh you know yeah. me, buddy. I knew. I'm a I cat knew. Lover. Yep. But even 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 getting past my love of cats, mm-hmm. so Charlie sets this poor cat on fire because it scratches her, mm-hmm. and then her dad comes along, and he's the whole point that he's trying to make is that you need to your powers need to be a choice and not a reaction, right? Which, that's fine. But then he's, like, basically telling her the cat is still alive and it's suffering. And she needs to end its suffering. Mm-hmm. And the only purpose of that is to bring up the the thing at the end where she gets in the car with the guy. Yeah. The guy at the, at the DSI place or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yep. And... You know, where she sets him on fire, but he's still alive, so she's got to put him out of his misery. Right. Great. 
You just taught her how to murder somebody. Yep. Yep. Which is <laughs> which is kind of the point he was trying to not make of murdering. Because he's like, you don't yeah. want to kill. Yeah, but if you do, make sure you do it, you really kill them. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> okay. I <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> All right, Dad. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i hated i hated the scene with the cat hated it yeah i totally agree and uh and then i hated the scene where she killed the guy in the car i did too i'm jumping ahead but first of all you know he he's supposed to be a bad guy he works for this government agency that wants to kidnap charlie and exploit her powers right um but they made it a stupid, weird point as he's walking out yeah. of the agency to have him talking to his wife, who's in her first trimester of pregnancy. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah, that was weird. Why reveal that and then have Charlie kill him? Yeah, are we supposed to feel bad? Like, what What was the yeah. point of that? It was stupid. It, I agree. And it was, the dialogue was so weird. Like, it just was <laughs> so forced. You know what I mean? To make it like, I need to tell everyone in the audience that my wife is pregnant in her first time. Yeah. It was just weird. Like, how we... I didn't like it. And that was dumb. I didn't either, buddy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but let's jump back. We got the scene uh, where Irv picks them up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I liked I liked John Beasley, who played Irv. Yeah, me too. Uh, and he's got... he's His wife... See that was pretty cool the way they did that. His I wife like that. is uh seems to be on life support mm-hmm. and he takes care of her. And then Charlie and then it's shown her. on TV. Yeah, it's shown on TV. Charlie, yeah, Charlie hears her thoughts. Mm-hmm. And kind of talks to his wife yeah. in her coma. Um but then Irv is up all night drinking and he sees on TV that Andy and Charlie are running from the law and mm-hmm. That Andy has killed his wife and kidnapped his daughter, and uh, yeah, which is fine. Yeah. I don't know how you felt about that, but that was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Really Some tension. Anything. Yeah. But then Charlie reveals that she has talked to his wife, mm-hmm. and he knows that he's the one that killed her. He was drunk behind the wheel. Right. And ran into another car and killed their son. Yeah. Put her in a coma for 30 years. Sheesh. Which I'm like, okay, 30 years? Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't make it like 20? Like, 30 is a long time. That's a really long time. I don't time. know. It felt like a long time for yeah. me. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but then, yeah, so uh, then the the police show up. Right. And as they're questioning Irv, who is about to get away with hiding Charlie and Andy, <laughs> all of a sudden the police get shot up by John Rainbird. That's right. Who is a master assassin. Yeah. And this is, so this is the part where, oh, I have and thoughts. this is the second part where Andy uses his powers. But man, like, Andy's powers just seem lame in the in the movie. Agreed. Like he uses it one time effectively yeah. out of like, three or four times that he tries to use his powers against somebody. Mm-hmm. And for a second, Rainbird loses sight of Charlie and everything around him. But Rainbird, having been through this before, goes up and knocks Andy over the head, destroying the illusion. So I have a question about that. And I know Andy's trying to be like, you shouldn't kill people, but he's trying to save his daughter and he mm-hmm. has killed before. I guess I know we get that flashback of him killing those two agents and it, he's distressed about it. But I'm like, I would have, I don't know. I just felt like, why didn't he just kill Rainbird? He has him right there. He's looking at him in the eyes. He tricks his mind. Yeah. I don't know. To me, I just felt like at that point he would have just ended Rainbird. But Yeah. It was, it's it's not the best. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It was a weird, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> It's like the first time he tries to do, he tries to push Rainbird in his living room when he's holding Charlie, like he doesn't do anything. Right. Like Rainbird just shakes it off. This well, time it yeah. worked. What? Tell well, me. Well, I was going to say, Rainbird's hiding behind the lamp. There's like the hanging lamp and his eyes are kind of behind it. Is that it? Uh-huh. That was wow. why he was like standing there behind the like lamp. 
Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't get that. That's what I two figured. Times, two yeah. times I didn't get that. Oh, funny. That's, yeah. But anyway, let's, uh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. They, they, they come, they, they take, they take Andy. Charlie gets away into the woods. Mm-hmm. Which brings up some more great scenes. First of all, Charlie eats a berry <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> like, <laughs> does somebody teach her survival? Yeah. Training or something like that? Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, well, and then she spits it out, and I was like, that's probably good because a lot of berries yeah. are poisonous, friend. Yeah, especially in just rural woods. Yes, yeah. yeah so weird, yeah. <laughs> All right, the scene where she's uh, trying to light little fires, that was that was kind of cool. I like that, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was she's good. learning to use her power. Yep. You know, in one scene, she learns to use her powers perfectly. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then she walks out into this neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> And there's a scene with these bullies, and it's just like, this bothered me so much, man. It was a weird scene, dude. They're completely different kids from the bullies in her school. I thought, yeah, yep. But yet, they still call her a weirdo. Like, what? Why? Yeah. Like, and I even... know people are mean. Right. But really, like, a little girl walks out, and she's, like, dirty, and, and they think... just automatically, like, ride their bikes around her and, like, what's up, weirdo? Why you look like that? Yeah. And one goes, don't you ever shower or something like, which I like thought, he, yeah, like he like he knew her, like oh you're always like this, but I was like, who are these kids? We've never <laughs> exactly. seen you, and they're older than her. It's not like they're yeah. in the same grade as her. It was weird. And then, I don't know. and then when she takes his clothes and they fit her perfectly, I'm like, yeah, uh, that kid perfect, was like a foot taller than you at least. She can no ride. Way. She can ride this big kid's bike. <laughs> Right. It's not too big for. Her. It's no. perfect. I thought that too. I was like, "What is happening here, guys? Like, you couldn't, you couldn't have brought that bully kid back. That would have been fine if we saw him, the one from the beginning at least, or something. I don't know. Yeah. Even then, but yeah, that was weird. That was a weird scene too. There's a lot of weird scenes. <laughs> a lot of weird scenes. <laughs> so then we get to uh, Charlie gets to the this lab, right? After the kids tell her where the coast is, so <laughs> which is no, just well she straight. knew she knew where she knew where it was because she got the call from, right, who she thought was her father, but it was actually Rainbird. Right, right, right. And uh, so she gets there. We already talked about her killing Agent Jules, and uh, that was whatever. Yeah. So then Charlie gets inside, and her dad pushes her, which was. That was that was a little powerful. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I did too. I liked the scene. I did too. Because otherwise she's not going to kill her own dad. Exactly. So he pushes her to do it. And then she goes on a rampage through these halls, <laughs> which w was cool and not cool. Yeah. I don't know. Here's the other thing, buddy. Lay it on me, man. I know it's it's... I didn't like her using all the other powers as much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, she comes across two guards, and she has them point guns at each other and shoot each other. Yeah. And it's like she's Firestarter, not like Professor X. Right. Well, yeah. And in the book, is does she have those other powers, or is it just fighter? Well, as far as I've gotten in the book, oh, okay. she's... She's got other powers, but they're not that strong. Gotcha. Like her her fire is her main ability. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Then yeah, how could she have the like you said, Professor X powers? And then we have the 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 poor the poor lady, the poor woman <laughs> who just happens to work there. I'm like, oh, and then Charlie, like for a second, I think Charlie's gonna let her go, and then she goes, liar, liar, pants on fire, and just immolates the woman. Yeah, she's. She's ash at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then I liked it when Charlie was shooting fire at the guys with the fireproof suits on. I like that. I thought that was smart of them. But then I was like, but she just used her other powers to sh have the two guys shoot each other. Why not lift their, make them like lift their masks off? Or You know what I mean? Well, unless it's the whole eye contact thing. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so the guy does finally lift his hat 
Right. And Charlie has is kind of tapped out for the moment. But then Rainbird comes in from behind and shoots them all. Yeah. And then we have a really cool scene. I did I like liked. that. Yep. Yeah, I like that scene. Yep. The steam, or, you know, him steaming. I was like, ooh. Like, that That was effective, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she's, she's, she's angry. Mm-hmm. And she's about to, she's thinking of setting him on fire, too. Yep. But then she holds back. Yep. <laughs> Not sure why. I don't either. I don't know. <laughs> it's like you just demolished everyone. Yeah, and, and the this only guy reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the only reason I can think of is that he came in and shot the other three. Right. And that he he gave up and he's like giving her permission. Yeah. And she's like, no. Yeah. And maybe everything's worn off. I don't know. Because she does not know that Rainbird has undergone a change. Right. That, that yeah, he, he killed her mom because he was, he that, that was his job. Right. And he went to kill her dad and take her, although he ended up kidnapping her dad because to get her to go, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but he's undergone a change because she's seen, he's seen the powers that she possesses. Mm-hmm. And now he's her guardian at the end. Which I never, I still, I, I don't know. I didn't quite get that either. Why Rainbird and the like? I forget the the kind of head of the operation. They're like, yeah, or, I forget uh, Captain Hollister. Yeah, or someone, or no, maybe it's not even her. I don't remember. But people are like, <laughs> you'll understand when you see her. And I was well, like, that's what her mom says. Right. Oh, that's right. Yep, 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 yep. And then he just repeats it. Right. But I'm like, what? What's so different, I guess? I mean, I get that she has a few more powers, but, like, everyone else had powers, too. Like, why is she so... I don't know. Also, I know this is, like, nerdy power thing <laughs> that I'm thinking of. Yeah. But Charlie goes through and is all of a sudden unable to, or is able to unlock all these electronic locks. Yeah, that was weird. And I'm like, how does she know how to do that? Yep. Like, yep. she's a little girl. You know, she can tell people to do things, mm -hmm. sure. But, like, logistically speaking, she would have to understand how an electronic lock works and then trick it into unlocking. Yeah. But they're just simplifying it to say she just looks at these locks and says in her mind, unlock, and they do it. Right. Like, they, how do they listen to it? I don't know, dude. I don't know. You know what I will say about this, though? It did Please make tell me, me what you will say about this. I will say, <laughs> no, it did make me want, because you know how Stephen King, all of his books, or a lot, they all tie, or people are related, or blah, 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 blah. A lot of them tie yeah. together, um, or all of them. But I was like, man, it'd be really cool to see her and Carrie team up, <laughs> or something with Carrie, because I'm like, you know, they both are, well, I don't want to Charlie versus Carrie. Yeah, right. I don't want to say much about Carrie, because. Yeah, they both have powers. Yeah, you know. But yeah, I just thought that would have been. That'd be cool. That'd be interesting. But I don't yeah. want to spoil anything with Carrie, so. I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> okay, fair, <laughs> enough. <laughs> fair uh, enough. But that's the movie. Yeah. Yep. The credits roll to John Carpenter and Cody Carpenter and Daniel Davies' amazing music. Yep. Which was fun. It was a really yeah. fun. It did. It had a lot of the same feel as the Halloween 2018 and... All of Kills. them. Halloween, yep. The Fog, Christine. Yep. All those movies. Uh, it had that feel to it. Yep. And I think, I feel like I even, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I I feel like I heard the music before I saw that it was him or realized, and mm. I was like, oh, that sounds like John Carpenter. And then it oh. was. And I was like, oh, well, That's there nice. you go. Yep. Well, I think I'm ready to ask you three questions unless you have anything else. Let's do it. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Question number one. Yes. What was your favorite kill or death in this movie? <laughs> so <laughs> there was a few of them, but the one that actually like made me think, or the one I appreciated, I guess, was when Andy it's the flashback when Andy has the two guards die, where he makes the one shoot the one. And then he mm. says, "Don't breathe." When I, or yeah. you know, when I leave, you can't. You'll forget you're gonna, how to breathe. You're gonna shoot the other guy in the chest, and then you're gonna forget to breathe. Yeah, and then he forget takes his daughter back. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, that's "Oh, that's effective. One. That's cool. I like that." That's good, buddy. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. What about you? Um, I am gonna go with the guy taking his eyes out. Oh, right on, dude. They don't show him die, but I thought it was a really good. I didn't really like 
any of the deaths in the movie, really. Yeah. Because, I don't know. I'm with you. No, I'm with you. I would have liked to have seen Charlie burn more bad people, like obvious bad people. Right. But, like, she just makes them do things with her powers, her mind, her telekinesis. Right. Instead of her pyrokinesis. And the peoples that she does burn, I don't totally felt deserved it. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I'm with you. Did you find this movie scary? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. Did now, you? that's an interesting question, though. Yeah. Could you, could you see how it could be a horror movie? I could, yeah. There's a lot of... I mean, there's a lot of death in it, and there's a, people mm-hmm. getting burnt and things like that, and it's... You know, government agency kind of things can be scary, too, of, like, experimentations, and so... I get that. I could see it. I could see people having some fear with this one, but for me personally, no, I didn't have any. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, me neither. But yeah, I did like I did appreciate that they tried to make this more of a horror movie in, in yeah. different ways than than I think the original movie felt. Because mm, mm-hmm. I don't remember. I saw the original movie in a theater when I was a kid. Oh, funny. Because I was a Drew Barrymore fan after after E.T. So. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I don't... Yeah. I always wondered, like, even reading the book, I always like, I was like, so this isn't really a horror novel. Mm. Although there's some horrific things, like a baby that can set things on fire just when it's angry. Right. It's pretty terrifying. Right. No, I agree. Because you never know what it's going to set on fire. Yeah. Uh, which actually, another point I didn't make, and this is... A small difference in the book that I will mention. Mm-hmm. After after he talks to Charlie in the kitchen, and there he's about to make breakfast for everybody. The camera pans back, and there's a fire extinguisher there. Uh huh. I would have in the book. They mention how they have fire extinguishers in every room. Oh, I like. that. I would have loved to have seen that. Yep. I would have loved to have seen multiple fire extinguishers throughout their place. For sure, that would have been awesome. So. With that said, Andrew, question number three. Did you have fun with horror? This one, I would say 50-50. This one was tough. Like, part of it was a lot of fun. Part of it was odd. (laughs) It's just kind of weird. So 50-50, man. This one's about half. What about you? Uh, 50-50, but in a different way. Okay. I have more fun with horror the first time I watched it. Okay. I was able to enjoy the movie. The further I get in the book, and when I watched it a second time and saw like little things that started to bother me more, mm-hmm. the less I have fun. So in the end, I'm going to say that I don't think this movie is awful. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm not going to sway all the way in one direction, but... I don't think it's a great movie. I think it's watchable. There. Yep, that's a great way to say that. Yep. Yeah. I think it's watchable. I think it's worth a watch. I think some people will find enjoyment in it. Mm -hmm. But upon closer inspection, I think people will find a lot of problems. And some people will find those problems without (laughs) inspecting it too close at (laughs) all. They're just going to hate it. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I would say not so much. Yep. I'm with you. All right. All right. Well, there's... Fire starter. <laughs> Fire starter. <laughs> there are none so blind as those who will not see. What? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you just just a second ago before I hit record, you're like, oh. Oh, I'll, I'll say it after you hit record. Just go ahead and introduce. I will. <laughs> Because I'll repeat what I said. Oh, okay. All right. Um, no, I, I don't even know. I'm just excited to hear your movie, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you picking? What are you picking? Okay, so <laughs> I'm picking a doozy. Yeah. Oh, boy. You're in for a doozy this weekend or whenever you watch it. Oh, boy. All right? Yeah. My movie for next week is a movie called The Sadness. I don't know this movie. Yeah, you do. You kind of do. What? This has been talked a lot about. It's on Shudder. 
And it's actually, according to JustWatch.com, it's also on AMC+. Plus, But it is, I believe, a foreign film. And I sent you a tweet a few weeks ago where somebody was talking about this really, like, I forget what the tweet was, but it was it was just talking about the sadness and how it was, like, just, like, ah. I don't even know. Like, gory, violent, like, the most, like, <laughs> one of the craziest movies. Oh, yeah. I do and remember I, and, that. Yeah, and I sent you the tweet, and I was like, oh, buddy. But it wasn't out yet. And oh then it came gosh. out this month on Shudder. Dude. And people have been talking about it. I've tried to avoid any conversation. Yeah. But it's available now, and I think I'm ready to watch it. Awesome, dude. Okay. I, 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 wow. I don't know what to expect, but I'm excited. I don't know if this is a foreign. It's it's made by a Canadian filmmaker named Rob Jabez. Okay. Who has not directed anything I've heard of. <laughs> no, this is his first feature film. Oh, cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. The sadness. A young couple trying to reunite, reunite amid a city of ravaged by a plague that turns its victims into deranged, bloodthirsty sadists. Oh, okay. <laughs> this movie's gonna be brutal, dude. Yeah, it is. And I hope I. Oh. This is yeah. This could. I'm be... not gonna read anything else. Yeah, don't. I don't want to know anything else. I'm ready for a brutal movie. Yeah, this one might be a rough watch. And I'm all on board. So definitely <laughs> watch it with your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kylie. Hi, Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to educate you more. Yep. This will be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, okay. All right. So that's it. That's our movie. Awesome. All right. So Shudder or AMC Plus, The Sadness. Dude, I'm excited. Yeah. Everybody go watch The Sadness on, on Shudder. Yes. I mean, really, maybe AMC+, Plus, but yeah. Shudder is the place to go. Yeah. Go to Shudder. Oh, I'm excited, man. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for picking a soon-to-be brutal movie. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope it leaves you shaking. It sure might. <laughs> <laughs> and... Well, well I'll, I'll, I'll do some quick plugs, of course, everyone. Yeah, we want please. you to uh, please go to our Facebook page. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. We, have, we even have YouTube, which is just all of these podcasts on YouTube. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have it all. But please, come and, come and say hi. Um, come say hi to us. Leave us a message. We'd love to chat with you. Um, just talk with us. We, we wanted to hear from you. We want to visit with you. We love horror. We know you do, too. Chat with us about it. It's fun. It's fun to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> There's that. All right, buddy. All right, man. We've reached that moment. Yeah. Time to say goodbye. Well, bye. I love you, buddy. <laughs> I love you too, dude. <laughs> bye, Irving. B bye, Winston. This was fun. It was so much fun. We talked about this girl that starts the fires. Wait, what? Yeah, didn't you remember talking about it? Who this? Uh, she starts fires. Yeah, she's got a dog. Oh, cute! I like dogs. Yeah. dog gets bit by a bat, and then it gets it goes crazy and bites people. Oh, okay. You're talking about the one where he's in a hotel and he's crazy. Yeah, Juco. Yep, yep. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Telling me I, I can't trust the TV? Shocker. I know. <laughs>